very warm welcome, and warm being the operative word this morning, to beautiful Christchurch Cathedral. On this the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, we're so pleased you can join us for worship this morning. My name is Tim Dobbin, and I have the honour and privilege of serving as rector of this cathedral and dean of this diocese. I'm delighted to be sharing the liturgy this morning with Michael Bloss, our director of music, and our cantors this morning, Richard Cunningham and John Janice. We extend a very warm welcome and a special welcome to Rob Miller, our guest preacher, who'll be serving as student internship with us this year. It's great to have you with us, Rob. I ask you please to be upholding Alison Meredith and her family in your prayers this morning. Her mother, Trudy, passed into God's nearer presence uh, at about nine o'clock on Friday evening. Uh, her uh, service will be held at a later date. Uh, Alison, we're with you, and uh, please be assured of our love and prayers. We offer this service of spiritual communion on the faithful understanding that we receive Christ spiritually, and we are united by the Spirit of Christ, even though we may be physically distanced and unable to gather together in person. From wherever you are sharing in this worship, May we all seek to live deeply into the work of truth and reconciliation and respect the history, spirituality and culture of First Nation, Inuit and Métis, as well as our responsibilities as treaty people. As we begin our worship, let us take a moment now to still ourselves in prayer for ourselves, our neighbours and for the world. The Father brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. My sisters and brothers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Author and giver of all good things, 
Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us in all goodness. And if your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First reading comes from James chapter 1, beginning at verse 17. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creation, of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice is the scepter of your realm. You love justice and hate wrongdoing. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above all others. God has blessed you.
soul waits for his word. be with you and also with you the holy gospel of our savior jesus christ according to mark glory to you lord jesus christ and when the pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from jerusalem gathered around him they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands that is without washing them for the pharisees and all the jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, folks of Christ Church Cathedral, it is my privilege to preach for you uh, today here from James Street North. Um, I was reflecting uh, as I walked over here this morning about this place, um, about this street. It's in fact the very first street and building I stepped onto and into. Uh, when I first came to Hamilton. My friend and I were in our undergrad in the fall, uh, first year of our undergrad, and we came down for an art crawl. And uh, we stepped through this building, and you welcomed us. And uh, that friend later on uh, became my wife, and we lived down uh, just off this street. So this place and this neighborhood is very important to us. And so it feels very good to be here. I will admit it feels a little strange also to be in your space and, and for you to be scattered abroad. We are indeed a church at this time scattered, uh, but I've had peace about that in the last months and trust that the Lord in his good time will reveal the why and the purpose, the redemptive purpose for which we've been scattered. Our first appointed reading uh, this morning comes to us in the form of a letter uh, from a man named James. And James, if you've never been a part of the church or this is new for you, James um, wrote a small letter as, from a pa as, a, as a pastor in the early church in Jerusalem. And uh, our tradition even holds him to be the brother of Jesus. So he wrote a small letter to his dispersed community, urging them to receive the gospel to live it out with impartiality, especially among the poor. He urged them to tend the heart and guard the tongue, to suffer well, and to expect God's 
loving intervention in the world and in their lives. It's a very good letter. And his words are fit for today. You could find them at the end of your Bible if you would like to reflect on them later on this afternoon. As I said, James writes to a scattered community, and so it is in his spirit that I, Rob, a servant of God and of the Lord Christ Jesus, greet you, the scattered of the cathedral. Peace. I'll tell you what, it's been an odd time uh, to join the Anglican, Anglican Communion here in Hamilton. There are but a handful of you who I've met, and those of you I've met uh, and been fortunate enough to meet I've only met virtually, um, you know, your names uh, and your faces are collected by me, but our, our meetings have yet to be in the flesh, most of, them, most of us, and I, with the Apostle Paul, long for that meeting. Um, Paul so often longs to meet his family and his community in the flesh, and that will be a good day when we get, when we get to do that. As this is my first sermon with you, I hope to preach from well-tended ground within my heart. That is to say, I hope to speak of convictions that are, as some of my loved ones would kindly say, convictions that are most classically raw. They are thoughts and images and motifs and metaphors that have been growing within me for the past, say, five or six years. They are reflections uh, that are well ripened within me, I would say, and their place is well known to me, and their fruit is well gathered. And so in the coming months, you're, you're likely going to receive from me similar, similar reflections in times of teaching and of conversation and at times of common work together. I'm going to feed you much of the same thing, and it might just be baked up into a different sort of pastry, if you will, a tart, a pie, a crumble, but the same recognizable sweetness inside. Images, metaphors, and thoughts to feed you on. I know they've fed me. And believe me and ask those who know me when you get the chance, I will shamelessly return to the same reflection if I know the picking is good, if I know the fruit is sweet. And so, that I, pr so I pray that our time together is rich, not only in this short offering, but also in our time to come. As some of you know, uh, one of the places I spend a great deal of my life, uh, the days of my life, uh, are on Barton Street East at 541 Eatery and Exchange. At this restaurant, my, I, myself and my co-workers and a faithful collective of volunteers have had the honor of serving the communities up and down Barton. And as I like to say, 541 is a non-for-profit restaurant that guards keeps or holds a space in which hospitality can be freely expressed, freely given, freely received. And so hospitality, if we allow our imagination to be shaped by New Testament word, is an action or disposition to the stranger, the other, uh, or the different. It is a verb that invites conflict through the door in order to sit it at table. It is a virtue that de-escalates anger so that sympathetic encounter may occur. In fact, hospitality, according to the Apostle Paul, is one of the few named dispositions that signals a bishop. A bishop, if you don't know, is a person who is called out to order and have oversight over the whole church in the spirit of the apostles. For Paul, pastoral leadership at the very top is hospitable in nature. He says a bishop needs to be beyond reproach, once married, sober, sensible, respectable, hospitable, and a good and skilled teacher. And that's from his letter, the letter to Timothy in the second chapter. I love hospitality. I love the disposition, and I love the action. And it's sweet. And be assured, you folks are going to get a lot of hospitality pie before this year's up. Forget the crumbs. You're going to be sliding whole slices of pie under the table, and you're going to be feeding the dogs just as our good Savior did. Hospitality is a dance 
our faithfulness between two different people, two different communities, two different hearts. And this dance is about the condition of the heart and its ability to receive the other. Hospitality, like many good things that concern our faith, is about the heart. And the heart, I believe, is at the center of our readings today. You can find the heart in the poetry of the Song of Songs. You can hear the heart in Mark's Gospel. You can hear it in the pastoral concern of James, as we heard in the first reading. And you can hear it in Solomon's wedding ceremony that we, that we hear of in Psalm 45, in which we sung pieces of this morning. So with our attention set on the heart, let's read ourselves into the gospel reading, shall we? I would say that we, much like the religious leaders of Jesus' day, are often hard-hearted, receptive, and unwelcoming. So heavy words, actually. Never, it's amazing sometimes you write these things up and you're like, wow, that, that, that hits hard. We're this way for one another, but we're also this way when it comes to Christ and the living God. I'd say this is what happens today in the gospel readings. In, in the gospel readings, some of the Pharisees from Jerusalem, a little too concerned maybe with their forebears' traditions, have made themselves guarded against an encounter with Jesus and his disciples. And so I wonder if we paint ourselves into the lines of this text, especially when it comes to uh, how we interact with our scriptures. I wonder what sort of traditions and perspectives and angles we, like the Pharisees, have learned to control our scriptures and insulate ourselves from the voice of the one who speaks through them, that is the living God. So what results from uh, our techniques and the techniques of the Pharisees is a control, and that control creates a distance. It creates a distance between God and the human heart, and it is in that distance that incongruence, doublespeak, hypocrisy, and vapid, empty, meaningless religion thrives. And though we may say otherwise, and we long to convince people otherwise, as the Pharisees did, the heart tends toward control. And it does so to shield itself from encountering and being encountered by the living God. And Jesus speaks to the heart of this problem by quoting a prophet from the Old Testament or from the Hebrew Scriptures. He says, Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied well about you hypocrites, you mask-wearing actors. As it stands written, this people, they honor me with their lips, but their heart has gone far off from me. See, what you say about your heart can be disastrously incongruent with reality to the point that the Word of God, the Scripture, and the Word of God embodied in the person of Christ may pass us by unrecognized, unwelcomed, and unloved. The person of Christ Here's another sweet reflection, and indeed, for me, maybe the sweetest of them all. And this is it. That for the church, for myself, we have this dogged belief that Christ is alive and seated at the right hand of the living God. And so Christ, our Lord Jesus, is not within us as an idea to think about, not a good philosophy for us to teach, not even a moral compass for us to guide our lives and the life of the world. But he is with outside, is outside us, outside of me, and because of that, is able to offer hospitality. Though we may not recognize him and pass him by, he will certainly recognize us and be able to extend faith when we couldn't. Christ comes to us in an encounter and welcomes the strangeness that is in us, that is in you, that is in me. The Lord is going to come to me one day and he's going to speak right into my heart. I hope in that day I'll be quick to listen 
slow to speak, slow to anger. For if in that day the difference of Christ that encounters me, if that encounter is conflict to me, and if it's in conflict to you, and that conflict leads us to anger, I assure you that anger will fail to bring about the righteousness that is Jesus, that Jesus would welcome us into, that Jesus would love us into. One day the Lord's going to say to me, Rob, you had, some, you had some good things to say about me. Better than those words, though, you, you did some incredible things. But I have to tell you, my child, you had some misguided You had some downright offensive and insignificant things to say about who I am and what I'm here to do. But I welcome you. Come in. I love you, and I've made room for you. All of this, my hands and what I do for you, my lips and what I say about you, all of it is a perfect and whole and complete reflection of my heart. In my heart, there is no incongruence. There's no doublespeak, no hypocrisy. This is my heart, and if you would but clear off the ground of your heart, well, you could receive a true word, and that true implanted word would not only save your life, but it would make you a sort of first fruits of my creation. It would set your heart to the seasons of fidelity, and you'd bear much fruit, and so much seed. Folks of this, of this cathedral, sisters and brothers, the letter of James is an important word for us today. Like this early pastor, I would urge you to set your heart on the rhythms of faith. Know the seasons of faith. I'd ask you to set, to first clear the ground of your heart and receive with meekness the implanted word. And with him, I would be bold in telling you that a life of Christian fidelity is best lived out. And so be doers of the word, and not only hearers who are led astray. Share your bread with the hungry and bring the unhoused into your homes. When you see the naked, cover them, and don't hide yourself from your own flesh. Don't hide yourself from your neighborhood, your communities, and your city. Welcome the orphan, for that is how the Father first welcomed you. And love the widow, for that is how Christ first loved you. And once your hands have completed all this good work, when you are with Christ in faith, rubbing shoulders with the world, yet cleaner and clearer than you've ever been, Well, then, my friends, let your tongues loose, that your words may have their time too. Give thanks. Amen. We affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, a one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed Lord, we offer our spirits to you this day. All our thoughts, words, and actions, all our sufferings and disappointments, and all our joys. We beseech you to hear our prayers and intercessions as we are united in you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You, O Lord, are close. Your commands are truth. Long have we known that your will is established forever. We pray for the church in the world, especially for the church of the South Sudan, the west central area of the Lutheran Synod of British Columbia, as well as the Anglican Diocese of Saskatoon. In our diocese, we pray for the clergy and people of Grace Church Watertown and our partner diocese of Cuba. Redeem this world and our mission with your peace, pardoning love, mercy, and grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying, particularly Eric, Susan, Linda, Michael, Joseph, Kathy, Gary, Veronica, Brian, Diana, Peter, Mildred, Emily, Nina, and Charlie. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Though we walk in the shadow of death, we will not fear any evil, for God is with us. God prepares a place for us. God of mercy, listen to our prayers and look with love on your servants who have died, especially Trudy Meredith. Eternal rest grant unto all who have died and look with love on those who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O send forth your truth and light. Let these be our guide as they have brought our sisters and brothers to follow you to your holy mountain to the place where you dwell. Today we pray and rejoice in the ministry of Kevin Brabs and John and Lori Lynn Bradley. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Embracing God, the hand of your loving kindness powerfully yet gently guides all the moments of our day. Go before us in our pilgrimage of life, anticipate our needs and prevent our failing. Send your spirit to unite us in faith, that sharing in your service we may rejoice in your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're giving thanks this morning as well for the life and witness of Canon Peter Ford, commending him into your gracious keeping and giving thanks for all that he contributed to, to our life here at the cathedral and across this diocese. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father, for forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive all we offer you this day. Give us grace to love one another, that your love may be made perfect in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. By water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a holy people. In Jesus Christ our Lord, you renew that mystery in bread and wine and nourish us to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the people who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation in calling Israel to be your people and your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. From these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you. 
with our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, so many, and make us one in you. Amen. I invite you now in the silence of your own hearts to make your own act of communion with Christ. Angelicus, fit panis hominum, dat panis celicus, figuris terminum, ores mirabilis, manducato. May your holy food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. My friends, go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.